a dream. Like Dr. King said, I have a dream. I woke up one morning after a fight with my husband, after I discovered text messages and calls to another woman, and I didn't even recognize myself. I mean, I looked at myself in the mirror and I saw the stains of mascara tears on my face because I had fallen asleep just crying. And I walked in the room and I saw my beautiful little baby sleeping like little angels. <laughs> and I knew, I knew why they were sleeping so well. I knew why they slept so peacefully because they knew that they were safe. They knew that they were loved. They knew that mommy would do anything for them. They knew that they had a strong and fearless mommy who would protect them from anything, anything, even a toxic parental mess. Yes, a toxic home. And I said, that's it. That's it. I'm leaving him. And then the thought of fear and doubt started to creep in my mind. As I looked around our home, you know, a four bedroom home, and I thought, oh my God, what am I gonna do? He had already found my secret babysitting money that I stashed away, and I just didn't know how I was gonna do it. How I was gonna afford a U-Haul, you know? But I truly believe that God was looking out for me, seriously. Because my BFF, I didn't even have the chance to call her. And my BFF called me and she said, pack your shit. <laughs> I will help you get on a plane to go back home to your mom. And we just both cried because I knew that I was going to have to leave her behind, you know, in another state and go home to New York. And I literally left with the clothes on my back. Literally, just a backpack and a baby bag. Yes, I was out. And I went back to New York. I went back home to my mom. And as usual, with open arms, she let me back in. <laughs> me and the babies. And it was so funny because I was so ashamed, really. I was so ashamed to go back home. I felt like a failure. I was leaving a top affluent community to take two little white kids into the hood, okay? Because that's the way they were gonna see them. My children didn't look like me. They were very fair, green eyes, blonde hair, red hair. They didn't look anything like anybody that I grew up with in the hood. <laughs> and they were gonna be like, whoa, Nina came home with these little white kids. <laughs> <laughs> and I just felt so ashamed, you know, to ring her doorbell. So I just stood the two babies up in front of the door and I rang the bell. <laughs> and then I stepped off to the side so that when she looked through the peephole, she just saw the two kids standing there in their little snow suits, you know, looking like miniature Eskimos. And of course she recognized them and opened the door immediately and just scooped them up in her arms. And you know, while she was distracted, <laughs> I just walked in and did the walk of shame right back to my old room. <laughs> you know, honestly, I know now though that it was the best decision of my life. Not just for me, but also for my children, you know? And even though I didn't feel like it back then, I know it now. I didn't realize how many opportunities that God would grant me with just having faith, just standing up for myself, just having the strength to say, this isn't what's meant for me. God, take me back into your arms. Give me something better. I know you have better for me because you made me in your own image. You made me for better than this. And, you know, 
just being home with my friends in New York City, back with my networks, being surrounded by people who loved me unconditionally, and the amazing recourse and support of my beautiful, wonderful Caribbean coconut family. <laughs> very tight-knit family, very tight-knit, very supportive. And, um, you know, sometimes you just have to make that hard decision that will change the course of your life. And even though you can't see it at the moment, even though you can't see it right then and there, it could be for the betterment of not just you, but everyone in your life, your children, your family, and even their future can be altered by the choices you make, every single choice you make. So make the right choices, sis, and have faith. My children and I, we're here in paradise. Once again, spending another year on another island, having another adventure, and loving our wonderful lives. You know, Imani's headed to medical school. I'm back in school, finishing my medical degree. Julie is a business owner and a philanthropist. And I married an international finance titan. Who would have thought, right? Me. A little girl from Harlem, New York City. A little Caribbean coconut, too shy to do anything or go anywhere but to church. Sunday, Tuesday, Friday, and sometimes Saturday. <laughs> I love my husband. He loves us all unconditionally. And he adores us. And he is a man. And even if it didn't work out between he and I, he is a very hard act to follow, seriously, because he's a man. He stepped up when their father chose ego and decided to step out of the picture. My husband loves my children. He walks them to school. He takes them to the bus. <laughs> he picks them up after school. He makes their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in the morning. He's a wonderful partner. And my life has been transformed. You know why? Because I had a dream. I had a dream. And I had faith. And I was brave enough not to settle. You see, the truth is, sister, if you want to do anything worth having in life, if you want to reach success and change the course of your future, you can't be comfortable. You cannot be comfortable and you cannot settle for where you are. No. Don't settle for what you have, especially if it's a toxic situation. You've got to be hungry. I could have chosen to stick it out. I could have chosen to stick around and stay with my husband. I mean, he took care of me. He's just a, pro a provider. He spoiled me. He had the financial stability, but the mental stability, the emotional stability, he lacked. And I lacked peace in my soul. And I knew that I could do better. So I did better. And sometimes you have to crawl before you walk. Starting over isn't easy. You got to walk before you run. Stay focused on your goals. You've got to run before you leap. Surround yourself with supportive people to propel you and help you leap forward. And you have to leap before you fly. So I implore each and every one of you, my loves, to run towards your dream. I encourage you to believe in yourself, to believe in your ability to strive, to plan, to take action, to have faith, to network, to browse singles, to meet different men, have the freaking confidence to go out there 
meet people, fail, but be strong to reach your ascension because that's what, that's what life is all about. Growing and glowing and looking for ways to master your path and improve yourself. And I want to remind you that God made us all in his image. So we have God's power of creation and manifestation inside of us. And we have his blessings over us. You're more powerful than you can ever, 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 ever imagine. Unleash your potential. Unleash your power. Untame that feminine, healed goddess who's hiding inside of you. Let your greatest self out and master your life. You deserve to dream. And you deserve to achieve that dream. I love you. Stay encouraged. Dream with love, mother.